What's going on ladies and gents welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and today we're going to go more into depth about Docker. Well, not more into depth into about Docker. I didn't go into depth about Docker in my, my, my past three videos. Now, I'm sorry, I just... Uh. Now, if you're interested in just a how do you isolate my project, meaning that how do you make my front end, my back end, and my database into different containers and how to connect them if you're interested in that i already did videos about that the first three videos actually so i'll leave a playlist down below of my docker series and you could just look at the first three videos that i created it'll tell you exactly how to do that now if you're more interested in more into depth about docker this is the video for you or starting from here on out is going to be the video for you so let's actually talk about images and containers and with docker it all begins with an image now an image is every file that makes up just enough of the operating system to do what you need it to do traditionally you you'd install a whole operating system with everything for each application you do with docker you pair it way down so that you have a little container with just enough of the operating system to do what you need it to do and with this or with how docker has it set up you could actually run a lot of these very efficiently on your computer and we're going to be taking a look on look at how to actually do that so i'm pretty sure a lot of people know how to do run containers and images so if you do skip this video it's not it's not for you uh as you can see right now docker images docker images will pull out all the images that i have currently and i have no image and if I don't have any images, I don't have I don't have any containers running at the moment because everything begins with an image, right? So let's actually build a container. And the way you do that is Docker run. Run is just telling Docker, hey, we're going to run a container. And I'm going to do dash IT because I want to actually bash into it. Now, if you didn't want to bash into it, if you don't want to be messing around inside your container, just leave IT off and it'll just run in the background but I want to actually get inside my container. And IT, which stands for interactive terminal, gives you small features or, yeah, they're, they're kind of small features like tab completion and makes your files look a little bit nicer, you know, color coded, even though the colors are are eh, somewhat, but eh, whatever, right? It just gives you a, new fe a little features, okay? And I'm gonna do docker run dash IT. And if you want to name your container, this is completely optional, but you should you should name your containers per project. You could do dash dash name. Like I said, if you want to name it, do this. And if you don't, just leave it alone. Now, if you want to name it, the next argument is what what do you want your container container name to be? And I want my container name to name to be as demo. All right, that's what we're gonna name it. That didn't even make sense. I want demo to be my container's name. And what image do you want to run on this container? I want to run a boon two. Now, like I said, it didn't find the image Ubuntu, so it's going to pull it from the Docker Hub. And as you can see, I'm actually inside of my container. If I do ls, we're going to get the standard file system. And if I do cat etc, and then ls, this gives you the, this is the standard path of like your, the distro you're actually using. As, as you can see, I'm actually using Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, version 20.04, which is pretty cool, right? Now, if I do clear over here, we can actually see all of the Docker PS. I'm actually formatted because it's going to be a little cramped in here. Uh, ENV, ENV, and then format. As you can see, we have one image currently running. Docker PS gives you all the images that is running. Docker PS. I will, we'll get into that, but Docker PS dash a will give you all the, all the containers, regardless if it's running or not. Okay. Getting comfortable here. Just letting you know that. Okay. So as you can see, we have a Docker up and running with the ID of four C six nine, as you can see right here, four six six nine and the name demo. And you can see that, that that's the name that we gave it. Now check this out. This is actually a, an, an important thing my dash app ls as you can see i have just created a file called my app now let's actually run a container with the same image that we ran over here exact same command docker run dash it dash dash name because we're going to name it 
I'm gonna say demo two and I want to run a boon two. So we just ran another container with the exact same Im image of a boon two. That's why it was, ex it was faster because we already have that image. So it's not pulling, it just ran it. Now let's do LS. As you can see, we don't have that file inside of this container. And this is what I wanted to talk about. This files can get inside of a container. You can make files and create files inside of a container, but that doesn't put them back into the image that the container came from. In this case, the Ubuntu image, it doesn't push it to the Ubuntu image that we have. They stay in that container. Now, if I exit right here, this container doesn't necessarily die. Oops, not no less. This container doesn't necessarily die. If I do that docker ps dash a to see all of the containers that I have, you're going to see that I have two containers. Uh, 76 C demo two, which we just exited and the demo that's currently running, which is right here. This demo container has the image or has the, my app file. This one does not. In order to convert, yes, you can convert a, com a an image or a container into an image, which is a lot of people do this and is very, very helpful. So let's say that you do a lot of work into these things, right? You do, obviously you're going to do, you're going to, you're going to create files. You're going to create environment variables inside of the container that you're running. You're going to do a lot of things inside the container. Now is bad practice just to leave it as a container like this. It is very bad practice to do this because especially if you don't name it, you don't know what the hell or what image is or what container was the container you were working on. If you have a lot of them, you can see how this could go up a lot, right? So in order to actually convert it into an image, let's do that right now. I'm going to exit. And the reason we want to convert it into image is to save all the stuff that we did. Just like this, my app, we're going to save this. I made a change here and I, I like that change. I'm going to save it into an image. I'm going to do Docker commit. And this is why I say it's important to actually name your containers because now we have to give it the name or the ID of the container that you want to actually convert. And I want to convert my demo container, which is this one, which is the one that has my app file into an image. Now, what's the name of the image? I'm going to just say my, or I'm going to say demo dash image. If I control say, I mean, hit enter there. If I do Docker images, oops, images, you're going to see that I have now two images right here. Now let's actually get inside this one image. Docker run dash IT uh, demo image. And we need to name it dash dash name demo image. And I'm going to say demo dash image dash V one. This is the version one of this is the container name. Remember that. Uh, hit enter enable to find oh sorry about that I forgot it's not <laughs> you're supposed to name the container first and then run the image you want so I want to name it demo dash image dash v2 one and then I want to run the demo image control <laughs> hit enter and there we go we have that if I do ls right here you're gonna see that file right here now if I do the exact same thing over here demo i mean demo docker run oh let's actually before i do that let's actually touch um new underscore file ls all right we see that new file right there now duck ducker docker run dash it dash dash name name i'm gonna do demo dash image dash v2 And I'm going to do that. I want to run the demo image. All right. If I do LS right here, you see, I still don't have that new file. Like I said, I, I'm not overriding the image that I have. Now I can override it by doing the exact same command of Docker commit. And this time I, I need to do the, uh, what was the name of this one? It was called demo images V1 demo dash images dash v1 
and I want to override the demo image that I currently have. Let's do that right now. And there we go. If I do, let me clear the screen. If I do Docker soccer, Docker images, as you can see, I still only have two images, Ubuntu and demo image and let's run demo image again. Uh, I'm gonna do V3 this time. LS. As you can see, I have my two apps or my two files right here, my app and new file. And this one is still running the old LS, the, the old image, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna just exit out, clear. And let's see all the containers that I have right now. And it's a lot of containers. And like I said, this could get pretty nasty, pretty fast. And that's why you wanna name all the things or all of the containers that you do. And right now I'm currently running demo image v3 as you can see created status up 18 seconds ago and all of these are exited. Well guys, geez, I don't even know why I said it like that, but that is it for this video. I just wanted you to demonstrate images and containers and what we could do with it. I know it's pretty simple, but there's not that much we could do with images and containers. It's just pretty cut and dry, right? Uh, you just create a container with the image that you want and that's it do all the things that you want inside the container if you want to save that file or save that container just commit it into an image and yeah that's basically it so in the next video we're going to be talking about how to manage containers and actually well no that's that's for another video i was going to say exposing ports but that's going to be a long video well i'm gonna say like a 15 minute video anyways Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something new. I hope, well, I hope you're going to try some of these things out. Now, if you did like it, please leave a comment down below on what you liked about it, what you want me to talk and like the video and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.